Question number 61. Which of these is not part of the pre-trip inspection of the engine compartment? In other words, what you don't have to check when you do pre-trip inspection. Definitely valve clearance here is not a part of the regular pre-trip inspection, right? of the engine compartment. You need to check engine oil, you need to uh, check if electrical wiring uh, insulated uh, properly, but valve clearance is not part, not part of the pre-trip inspection. A regular pre-trip inspection, right? Let's see. A, enter. Yes, valve clearance, not part of the pre-trip inspection. <clears throat> Question number 62. The road you are driving on becomes very slippery due to the glare ice. Slippery. It became slippery. Okay, which of this is a good thing to do in such a situation? What you need to do to keep control of your vehicle, to keep control of your vehicle on a slippery road. And definitely, uh, um, you need to stop driving as soon as you can safely, safely, do so safely slow uh, safe safely is a, a always clue the keyword indicating the right answer so on a slippery road you should stop driving as soon as you can safely do safely so all right very good let's see a enter yes on a slippery road stop driving safely question number 63 you wish to turn right from one two-lane, two-way street to another. And your vehicle is so long that you must swing wide to make a turn. So, uh, the question, how should you make a turn safely? And uh, the uh, right answer here is B, you should swing wide. When? When you complete the turn. When you complete the turn. Not when you begin. Not when no, 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 you shouldn't uh, uh, drive straight. You should swing wide when you complete the turn. When you complete In the other turn. words, you need to, well, pull your vehicle for straight uh, until to until you reach uh, like a uh, halfway have the intersection so when you complete the turn when you or like uh, in, uh, in in the final uh, turn of your maneuver, in the final stage complete the turn okay let's okay. see complete yes when you need uh, uh, when you turn right you might be uh, shown a figure on the uh, exam but uh, um, uh, the point how you make a turn well, on a long vehicle is this one. You you make turn when you complete the turn, not in the beginning, but just in the final stage stage of your turn. Question number sixty four. You're driving a vehicle that could safely be driven at 50, 55 miles per hour on an open road, by the way. However, traffic is heavy. Another uh, vehicle. Uh, are driving at uh, 35 miles per hour although the speed limit is 55 the safest speed for your vehicle is more likely to be it's obvious it's very simple uh, the question writer is trying to trick you but uh, if the traffic all the traffic uh, all the vehicles in the traffic driving at 35 miles per hour what is your safest speed most likely to be or oh, definitely 35 miles Go per hour. with the flow. Yep, with the traffic 35 miles per hour, yes. What, uh, question number 65. What is a counter steering? Counter steering. And again, that's something you need to welcome it to your memory. Uh, counter steering is uh, uh, turning the wheel back in the other direction after steering so if you turn your steering wheel to the left to avoid the traffic to avoid the traffic emergency then you need to counter steer back to the right if you need if you need to turn your steering wheel to the right uh, well then you need to return to counter steer your steering wheel back in the other direction 
And by the way, pay attention, guys. The longest, huh? The longest answer is usually the correct one. And to avoid a traffic emergency. Okay. Counter steering. Avoid traffic emergency. Avoid, avoid traffic emergency. This is a safe drive. Question number 66. <clears throat> Which of these statements about backing a heavy vehicle is true? Uh, easy stuff. Uh, right answer here is the first one. A. You should avoid backing whenever you can. Whenever. So if you can avoid backing, do it. If you can do a maneuver without backing, do it. Whenever you can, avoid backing. If you need to do it anyway, then you need to use uh, uh, helpers and uh, some other stuff to, well, uh, to, to increase your safe. safety, right? So, uh, the correct statement, true statement about backing, that is you should avoid backing, avoid backing. whenever you can. Whenever you can. Question number 67. Which of these statements about marking a stopped vehicle is true? Marking a stopped vehicle means you need to mark it. You need to put something, like you have reflective, reflective triangles, three ref reflective triangles uh, with you in your cap. And you need to mark your vehicle, which is stopped, well, usually in the shoulder. And, uh, <clears throat> and here again, the longest answer is the correct one. If a hill curve keeps drivers behind you from seeing the vehicle, your vehicle, within 500 feet, the rear reflective triangles, triangles, the third one, huh, should be moved down the road to give adequate warning. Adequate warning. Right? So that's how you need to stop your vehicle, especially when, when uh, it is uh, like parked, stopped. Um, um, so if you usually keep uh, 10 feet, 100 feet, and 200 feet behind. Yeah, on a hill or curve, the, the curve keeps driver behind you from seeing your vehicle. In this case, you need to get it back up to 500 feet to give adequate warning. All right? Let's see. Yes, 500 feet. So you remember 500 in the answer. Question number 68. Which of these best describes how you should use the brake pedal on a steep downhill grade? On a downhill grade, on the downgrade, how should you use your brake pedal? Please remember, that's something you just always need to be aware of, need to remember. Light, steady pressure. Light, steady pressure. Not pumping. It's a, in the case of emergency, you need to pump it. Not repeated strong pressure, then release. It's again in case of emergency. On a regular driving, during the regular driving, on a steep downhill grade, you need to use your brake pedal or with a light, steady pressure. Light, steady pressure. Okay, very good. Question number 69. Again, which of these statements about using turn signals is true. In other words, how should you use your turn signals? Again, the question is about safety. And uh, uh, here is uh, like um, uh, the shortest answer is the correct one, but uh, key, pay attention early. Early. Signal early. You remember we discussed before? There was word before. Before. Everything you need to do before. Before emergency happens. Before uh, well, fire happens. Uh, you need to check the, your equipment before the trip. Early is the synonym of the before. Early. Signal early. Early. All right. So turn signals. How should you use them? Uh, when turning, you should signal early. Early. Very good. Question number 70. Which of these statements about double clutching and shifting is true? And again, guys, it's easy. You have to use uh, your tachometer. Tachometer. Because it shows you the RPM uh, your engine works uh -huh, with. 
And uh, when do double clutching and shifting, you should use the tachometer. tachometer. You can use the tachometer. You should use the tachometer, uh huh, but according to the uh, driver's manual. Because tachometer is able to tell you when to shift. We're not discussing what the double clutching is, and you actually not ask it about the what double clutching is. But you need to remember, while doing double clutching and shifting, tachometer is a clue. <clears throat> Question number 71. Which of these statements about speed management is true? Speed management. And uh, here again, <clears throat> Uh, a little like a uh, tricky word for you, which can help you within. Within. We discussed it before. This, uh, well, uh, word uh, is uh, very um, frequently used, and it's uh, uh, usually a mark, landmark of the correct answer. Uh, let's read the, the whole answer. You should choose a speed that lets you stop within the distance that you can see ahead. So, speed management, your speed should be managed in the Adjust. way, should be adjusted, should be, uh, well, maintained uh, in that uh, level that let you stop within the distance that, that you can see ahead, all right? Within. Very short question. Retarders, question 72 retarders and uh, obviously you ask it what the retarders are and or what they are used for right and uh, in this particular case in the case when you ask it this just uh, one word question you need to remember that retarders are very useful things they can uh, uh, help you to slow the vehicle they prevent uh, extra wear of your brake pads but at the same time, in case of poor traction, they can cause the driver wheels to skid. So you cannot use them on a slippery car. road. On a slippery poor road, traction. yeah. On a slippery road, when your the, like tires tread depth is not enough, uh, so you have a poor traction of your tires with the road surface. Uh, in this particular case, retarders can be uh, use of retarders can be dangerous, uh -huh, because they can cause the driver driver driving wheels to skid because of the poor traction. Poor traction. Let's see, poor traction. Again, please remember, retarders are very good devices to use to help well to slow the vehicle. Save your gas. Uh -huh, and brake pads wearing. At the same time, eh, when the poor traction, the driving wheels could, uh, well, get to skid. Question number 73. To correct a drive wheel braking skid, you should. And uh, uh, we discussed this uh, before also. When something happened, when, when you do something wrong and, uh, well, some, some potential dangers may happen, what you should do, you should stop doing this, uh, well, dangerous, uh, well, action. Action, yeah. Stop mm -hmm. braking. If, you, if it's braking skid, what you should do, you definitely should stop braking. Stop braking. And then turn quickly and then counter steer. But first thing, most important thing you need to do is to stop braking stop because it's braking, braking skid. The dry wheels uh, go to skid because of excessive braking. Uh huh. So stop braking first. Seventy-four. When exiting or entering on a curved freeway ramp, you should. What you should do on a curved ramp? Definitely, simply maintain the posted speed limit would not be enough. Because not for talking, heavy, yeah, heavy we, machine. You, you uh, operate a heavy vehicle. So for you, you should maintain speed 5 to 10 miles per hour under the posted speed limit. Simply posted speed limit is not enough. For you, on a curved ramp, you should maintain your speed 5 to 10 miles per hour under the post speed limit. 5 right? 10 miles under the posted speed limit. 
what we do. Uh, uh, we made a mistake. I accidentally uh, choose uh, chosen. <laughs> you see. Uh, by the way, this is a good example how the program uh, corrects you, how the program advises you which answer is correct. You see, I uh, accidentally uh, cho have chosen uh, well choice wrong C, answer. wrong answer, and the program tells you mistake. The correct answer is A. When the curved freeway, you need to maintain your speed 5 to 10 miles per hour on the limit. And again, every, well, next time when you do the mistake, well, occasionally. Our program will correct you. Our program will show you that mm -mm, uh, mistake, the, the, the correct answer is such and such. And you see uh, the number of mistakes we did. So, we, so, so far we did good. We did no mistakes. Only so far, one mistake. Now, uh -huh. The program starts to count one mistake. All right. Question number seventy-five. Which of the following vehicles will have the longest stopping distance? Longest. The longest stopping distance. In case if you need to choose between empty truck, loaded truck, and bobtail tractor, and the correct answer is C, bobtail tractor. Bobtail. Why? Because bobtail tractor is uh, the the lightest one. Okay, it's it's not loaded. It it's not hooked to the uh, <clears throat> trailer, and the suspension system of the bobtail tractor is designed to work under a heavy load. So when the bobtail tractor is not hooked with the trailer, you cannot use the uh, the power of your brakes, and that's a, a reason why bobtail tractor, which is not hooked with the trailer have a long has a longest stopping distance please remember about it. bobtail tractor bobtail bobtail longest well <clears throat> easy stuff how many red reflective triangles are you, are you required to carry of course 3 3 remember 3 reflective triangles you need to have in your cap uh, well, you are required to carry in your vehicle for your safety. All right, three. Question number 77. You are required to inspect your truck within how many miles after beginning the trip? And uh, again, that's something you just simply need to memorize. 25 miles according to the driver's manual. When you start your trip, after 25 miles of your trip, you need to stop. And by the law, you are required to inspect your truck. Everything, huh? your tires, uh, the uh, your load, uh, <clears throat> 25 miles per hour. Question number 78. Well, there are two types of jackknives. And they are... Trailer, tractor, or both A and B. Guys, uh, uh, we're not going to explain you what the jackknives is. Uh, just remember, you ask it about two types. All right, so both A and B. A and B. Two, both. Uh huh. Two, both. Because uh, re really, that, that there is two. There are two types: trailer jackknife and tractor jackknife. The, the correct answer when you ask it about two types, there are, and they are. They are both A and B, right? Very good. Seventy-nine. The new BAC (blood alcohol concentration) for commercial drivers to be considered intoxicated while driving a, com a commercial vehicle is. 0 0.04 0 0.04 please remember it's very important two time less than regular yeah driver. so uh, for you as a commercial drivers to be considered intoxicated when you are behind your wheel of your commercial vehicle the BAC is 0 0.04 okay in, uh, and and uh, this uh, blood alcohol concentration limit is uh, uh, the same for every single uh, state in the United States of America. 0 0.04. That's a commercial federal regulation. Question number 80. Where should the ignition key be during the pre-trip inspection? 
Easy stuff also. In your pocket. Safety, safety. Keep it with you. Keep it in your pocket. Don't leave it in the ignition. Don't leave it on the driver's seat. Keep it with you in your pocket. That that, that, that's where the ignition key should be. Okay. Let's see. Yes, ignition key. Okay. And now, 80 questions are completed. Done. And uh, the program... Uh, produces the test results immediately. So we did 80 questions and uh, you remember so far we did one mistake which is 1.3 uh, percent which is very good and uh, you have uh, like uh, three choices three options you might uh, repeat questions with wrong answer which we recommend you do because sometimes, uh, especially, uh, well, after first attempt, you might uh, be having like 10, 15, 20. It, it is how you learn. It is it how you learn. You so repeat questions with wrong answers. You repeat question with wrong answers. And when you choose this option, the program gets, uh, well, gets you back to the only wrong answers. And you'll be having chance to, well, learn to repeat if you make a mistake again again don't worry you'll be uh, uh, well prompted to return to this uh, until you make zero mistake uh -huh. you uh, have an option to get back to main menu or to exit let's try question with wrong answer yeah you remember we did this uh, mistake when exiting or entering on a curved freeway ramp so let's not do the same mistake again uh -huh. five to ten miles per hour under the positive speed limit okay hey Boom. Oh, yes. now we are right. right. And uh, because we made only one mistake and we corrected this mistake, okay, we are back at the well, test results. Now, guys, you choose main menu and you return to general knowledge. Not return, you choose either general knowledge 1 or general knowledge 2 and do it with the well, same technique. And, uh, and good luck. And by the way, for general knowledge too, uh, well, re we are referring you to the, well, uh, to separate, DVD, CD. separate CD, DVD. Okay? Good luck, guys. Thank you.